In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to use tracing paper, which a lot of you probably already know how to use, but um, you might learn a couple of tips from this. Um, you'll notice that I have some masking tape out here. Um, I'm working on a little light table. You don't need to use a light table. There's my original drawing taped down. Why do I tape it down so it doesn't slide around and move while I'm trying to outline? Put the tracing paper over top and just put little tabs of masking tape there too just to keep it from sliding around. So I have the advantage of using a light table here but you know really if I turn the light off even though it becomes kind of dark for you to see we're still looking through the tracing paper and I can see pretty well well enough to do a contour drawing from this darkness of under drawing. Anyway, I'm going to work with this on. So I'm going to use a fairly light pencil because ultimately I'm going to be drawing with marker over top of my drawing. Um, if I think I might make a mistake with the second step, first step is pencil, next step is marker after this. If I think I'm going to make a mistake in the second step, I might just do my drawing on here on this piece of tracing paper and then overlay yet another piece of paper on top of that. Anyway, so um, the first drawing that we're going to make is a contour drawing to give an idea of what the shape looks like, what my object looks like. So I'm just going to draw around contour drawing doesn't give you a lot of information it just kind of shades in enough detail enough basic line work that you have an idea of what the object looks like what its main shapes are and that you're capturing the essence of the object like what are the telling signs the telltale signs of what this object is so if I stop there I'm put a blank piece of paper in between so you can see the trace that I just made. So that's the tracing I just made. Is that enough information for us to know what the object is? Mm, almost, but not really. I need to have some inner contour lines as well, or outlines. And that's why observational drawing is so important, that we get the shading in properly and uh, you know, this shadow area here just kind of indicates that there's a curve in this. So with my contour lines, I have some decisions to make. Do I want to just have one line that represents it as a corner? But this is actually a bit of a rounded corner. So maybe I need to use two lines to indicate that it is a rounded corner. So I'm going to make the decision to use two lines. And if I don't like the effect, well, then I just move over to my other empty square piece over of tracing paper over here and do another one. That's the beauty of using tracing paper. You're never affecting the original object. In a way, it's kind of like what you do in photography when you don't edit your original photograph, you make a copy of it. So this is endlessly editable because you're not actually damaging the original. So I'm going to draw this contour line here. And I'm actually going to take it down right to the bottom and then I'm going to make another contour line here and take it down to the bottom. You notice that I'm doing a little curve at the bottom just to show that there's a little bit of a tuck in there. Um, one thing is it's a little hard to tell where I've oh because I'm not going super dark with my pencil. Sometimes it's hard to tell where I have or have not traced. So occasionally you want to lift up your paper and this is where the masking tape comes in handy. You can check yourself realize oh yes I still need to make that inner outline and then the trans tracing paper goes back down the same position and we don't lose track of where we are okay and I'm gonna need a little bit of a contour here as well to show that there's a change in direction so maybe we'll be able to tell that it's actually a little spout. And what else do we need to add? Oh, I guess we better turn that off or we see the drawing underneath. 
I think there needs to be another line here. I've got double line here, double line here, that, and also that handle is missing a little bit, although we could get away with that. I think I'd like to indicate a little bit of the ridge. I'm definitely going to continue the line. Yes, I think I do need to indicate one more sort of a double right in here. Okay, let's see the result. Oops. Okay, that line needs a little darkening. But I think this outline drawing gives us a pretty good idea of what the original object look like. What defines this original object? Okay, then you have two other steps after this, right? You need to make two other drawings, pencil drawings. Um, one for shadows and one that uses shading and line and dots. Look for the examples on the assignment page. Um, and then after you've made those three translations of your original object into graphics, then you're going to take your marker, whatever one, uh, depending on if you're doing outline, you might want to use a fine point tip or ultra fine. I should say this is the Sharpie defines this is ultra fine. And, um, and then for the other steps, you'll probably need maybe a chisel marker um, as well as the just regular fine point sharpie this one here to do shading okay but for this step we don't need any shading and i'm actually going to put another piece of tracing paper on top of this so that i can trace the object in marker through the paper rather than um, maybe messing up on top of this one you could go directly on top as well and if you do find a flaw like if i was going to trace directly on my my uh, pencil one if I find a flaw, I just fix the flaw because I'm going to erase the pencil underdrawing um, before I would submit it to, uh, you know, a client for a preview just to clean it up. Okay, so let's line that up. I'm going to turn this back on. Well, we'll get rid of that. And actually, I'm going to get rid of my... original observation drawing. That way I won't get confused by the details. This is all about simplifying, so I might as well simplify what your mind is dealing with as well. And I'm just going to get another piece of tape. If you're doing, if you're adding tape to a light table or to a window make sure you tape the take the tape off pretty quickly after you're done so it doesn't stick to, and leave residue behind it's always good to clean up after yourself especially if you're using a shared uh, light table and to save yourself grief so with this marker I'm just gonna start outlining what I've done in pencil And you'll notice that I'm doing this freehand. I'm not using a ruler to create these straight lines. I actually like the look of hand drawn, and that's the whole point of starting with an observational drawing, is that it's a handmade piece, and it feels like, I don't know, for me it's more natural for these ideas to come out through my hands. Uh, with a pencil or pen rather than on a computer. Maybe it's because I make a lot of typos and stuff. Although I do love using Photoshop. It's one of my favorites for my photography. Okay. 
Hmm. I'm not sure I like that I've closed that line there. And I said I was going to add another contour line here. I didn't edit the drawing, I just did it directly with the marker. It's a little bit messy. All right, let's see what the tracing looks like. The, the contour tracing in fine, ultra fine sharpie marker. Yeah, I'm gonna do it again. Not for the video for you to see, but I'm gonna do it again because I don't like the way the handle's represented. Perhaps I'll try one line in there, but I'm not too keen on that. And I want to eliminate that line going across there. I think it defeats the purpose of drawing that contour. Uh, this looks much better. It actually indicates the way the surface moves in the original object, which by the way, happens to be this. That's quite dark. The original object here. I like the way that double line works to capture that and I appreciate that it almost looks like it's pouring in there. 